So we expect great and mighty things. And I want to please the Lord more than anything in these last days. I want to please the Lord. I was going to share with you, and I'll probably share next week. I'll be emotionally better, well qualified. I, I lost my dog this, uh, this past week, Lammy, whom I rescued in the park 10 years ago. And through this, the Lord has taught me a lot of things. A lot of things that I will probably share next week because I want to... He's still teaching me right now, so let him finish what he's... <laughs> then I will, I will share with you, but many, many things the Lord is teaching me and still teaching me through this whole relationship that I had with this dog that I rescued in the park 10 years ago on a hot summer day that nobody wanted and uh, so I will share with you probably next week when I talk about servanthood that what pleases the Lord us is us being a servant Amen. more than anything else in life is that Christian calling is to be a servant Amen. of the Lord. And um, so I will be more, hopefully more with it next week <laughs> as I share what God has been doing in my life and still doing through this whole ordeal. And, um, um, and I'll share with you some revelational truth that also the Lord gave me through this. And God has been, really been showing me a lot of things in scripture lately and opening my eyes to a lot of truth. And I believe it's just the beginning. I talked to Larry Love, who has been a longtime friend of mine, and I lost contact for many, many years. And he was the first one in our group at Moody that received the Pentecostal filling of the Spirit when, uh, when I was a student at Moody. And we thought he went off the deep end. Well, many of us went off the deep end. You say, but how many glad it's good to go off the deep end with Jesus? <laughs> Anyhow, I, as I talked with him, and he prophesied something to me, and uh, we hung up, and then I believe the Lord wants him here to, to speak to us and, and to share. He's, he's a man that's anointed of the Lord, full of love. My goodness, love just oozes out of him. He's, I told him, I said, your name really represents you. <laughs> and it really does. So uh, be praying about that when the Lord wants him here, but I believe that he will impart something to us. Everybody, just as Eva imparted something to this church, uh, we impart things, and ministers, we all impart things, and uh, we're to be imparters. <laughs> Amen? But we're to please the Lord. More than anything else, we're to please the Lord, to live a life pleasing to the Lord. And uh, I, the Bible teaches in the, the scripture, if you can put the scripture up, it talks about fully pleasing the Lord. Fully pleasing the Lord. I want my life to be fully pleasing the Lord. In, uh, in Colossians 1.10, that you make walk worthy of the Lord, fully, everybody say fully pleasing Him. Fully pleasing Him. Being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Fully pleasing the Lord. I want to my life at the end to be fully pleasing the Lord. I want his smile to be on my life. You know, I never understood that verse, grieve not the Holy Spirit. It actually means don't make him sorrowful. Make him please. Our life should be put the smile of God on him. And I believe the Lord loves us whether we please him or not. He still loves us. But I want more than just the fact that the Lord loves me. I want in return to live a life that puts the smile of God on his face. And I want to hear at the end of my life, well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. So when I stand before him, there'll be a smile. Amen. A smile over my life. Pleasing the Lord. Well, what pleases the Lord? Well, I shared with you, to please the Lord, we must live a life of faith. We have to... Uh, trust the Lord for salvation, but we also trust the Lord and trusting the Lord without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So we must walk by faith. And the, everything is in the Christian life. It's faith, 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 faith. Faith is looking to the Lord. Faith is saying, Lord, you are my source for everything. And that pleases Him. 
to please the Lord, we must live a life of holiness. And uh, I thought I was through with that, but there's one other thing the Lord wants me to remind you, and that is living a life of holiness also means holy talk. What we are saying behind the scenes, what we are saying at home, what we are saying to people, what we are saying to different individuals, what, how we react and what we say, is that pleasing the Lord? What are, is my mouth holy? Is my mouth holy? My mouth and words that come out of my mouth ought to be pleasing to the Lord. They ought to be words that he wants me to be speaking. Holy in my actions, holy in my responses, holy in my thinking, holy in my feeling. Holy simply means set apart unto him, Christ-like, to be like him in everything. That pleases him. To please the Lord, we must also live a life of love. Love. Love is the greatest. Loving other people means so many things. Giving, forgiving, serving, blessing. Amen. Walking in love. Walking in love means you are wanting and seeking the best for other people. That should be getting your eyes off yourself and getting your eyes on other people. Loving other people. Loving Christians. Loving unsaved people. Loving unsaved people. Praying for them. Bur burden over their lost condition. Hurting when Christians hurt. Feeling their hurts. Loving people involves so many things, so many aspects, so many dimensions. Walking in love to the fullness. I want to be a loving Christian in these last days. And then today I want to share with you, to please the Lord, we must be seeking the Lord. Let's, I believe a life of seeking the Lord pleases Him. Seeking Him with all of our heart. There's several passages I can share with you, but there's three that come to my mind. And that is Jeremiah, what is it, Jeremiah 29, 13, where it says, uh, if you seek me, what? With all of your heart, you'll find me when you seek me or search me with all of your heart. And then this verse, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. And how about this one? He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Seeking the Lord. Are you a seeker of the Lord? Not every Christian's a seeker. The Lord is looking for seekers. He, it pleases him when his people seek him. Go after him. It shows that we want the Lord in my life. We really want him. And what really pleases the Lord is when we seek him with all of our hearts. That pleases the Lord. Remember Joshua and Caleb, they entered the promised land. Only two entered the promised land. Must have, must have been that everybody else didn't seek the Lord with all their hearts. And what pleases the Lord is when his people seek him with all of their hearts. No half-hearted half seeking doesn't please the Lord. You know why? Because he wholeheartedly seeks you. The Lord wholeheartedly seeks you. He's after you. Jesus gave himself completely for us. He's going after you with all of his heart. Should we not, in response, give him our hearts? Seeking the Lord means I'm seeking him with all of my heart, not half-hearted, not double-minded, not seeking my, my, me and what I want, first, but seeking what he wants, seeking him with all of my heart. This is what pleases the Lord. I don't want to say this, but I think probably most American Christians are not wholehearted seekers. They're half-hearted seekers. The Lord still loves them, but he, his heart breaks when his children half-heartedly seek him. But he, he's pleased when we wholeheartedly go after him. Seeking him with all of our hearts. Seeking him because he's seeking us. Amen? Seeking him in all things all with our, for our whole life. Not just seeking him, having him as a spare tire. 
Now, thank God he is a spare tire. Amen. When you get in a mess, you can call on Jesus. But the Lord should not just be a spare tire. The Lord should be the whole car. The Lord should be everything. The whole thing. Not just partly when I need him, only when I need him in a crisis. He should be my life. Seeking him for all my life, for everything, every detail, every part, every nook and cranny of my life. This is what pleases the Lord is when I look to him for everything. I bring him into my life. He wants to be in my life. He wants to be in the center of my life. He wants to help me. He wants to roll his sleeves up, so to speak, and get in there and help me and bless me and work in me and change me. But if I don't seek him about everything, we kind of push him out. Or we don't invite him in. That displeases the Lord. He's grieved when we don't allow him to come into every part of our life, every detail. Because he wants to be in every detail of my life. I'm talking about the nitty gritty. I'm talking about practical things. I'm talking about when you lose an animal, like I lost an animal that was close to me. I'm talking about work situations. I'm talking about finances. I'm talking about relationships. The Lord wants to bless you in relationships. But he wants you to have the best relationship. But if we don't seek him for the best relationship, we're not going to get his best. He wants you to have a good relationship with other people. He wants you to be, uh, have your finances and your needs met. He wants to you to be changed. He wants to work miracles in your life. But you have to seek him. Go after him. And when you go after him, he'll, he'll, he'll bless you. He'll work in you. If you seek me with all of your heart, what does he say? You'll find me. You'll find me. But he wants you wholeheartedly to go after him. And every detail, every aspect, everything in your life, every detail, every part, every area, nothing, there should be nothing you should not, everything in my life I should seek the Lord for. If I want his touch, if I want his hand, where I'm going to live, what school I should go to, who I'm going to marry or should marry, or where, what kind of car I'm going to have. I know firsthand, I didn't seek the Lord for some cars I owned. And I got some lemons. How many have ever had a lemon? I even had a yellow station where I looked like a lemon. <laughs> and it was a lemon. Finally, the Lord delivered me from that lemon. Amen. But I didn't seek him about what, what kind of car to buy. I, I remember, I, there's, I, I kind of confess to you, there's many things that I made decisions I didn't seek the Lord about. And I made a mess. Don't look at me. You've made some messes too. <laughs> Seek him and he'll say, okay, let, I'll help you here. I'll, I'll give you wisdom here. I'll direct you here. I'll, I'll make things happen. I'll show you which way to go. I, you, he knows what's best for me. So seek him for every detail. Seek him as far as relationships are concerned. Seek him as far as your finances. Seek him as far as a job is concerned. Seek him as far as where you should live. Seek his perfect will. His perfect will is the best for you. But I don't want to just have his perfect will in some areas. I want God's perfect will in all areas of my life. Not his permissive will. What he permits. You know, he permits a lot of things. He permitted the Israelites to be wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. But that wasn't his perfect will. His perfect will was to come into the promised land. God's perfect will for you is to come into the promised land. He has a promised land for you. Why stay in the wilderness going round and round when he's got a perfect will in the promised land for you? But you've got to want it. You've got to want his perfect will. He's not going to force it on you. He'll work in you. He'll draw you. He'll woo you. But still there's that element. We're not robots. He wants us to respond and seek him with all of our hearts. His perfect will. He wants us to seek him for a close relationship with him. He wants, he desires to be close to us. Do you understand that this morning? The Lord desires to have a close relationship with us. He loves to hear your voice when you pray. 
He loves it when you throw your burdens on him. He loves it when you throw, come to him with your hurts. He loves it when you get him involved in your life. He wants to have a close relationship with you more than you want a close relationship with him. How about that? He wants, the Lord wants to come close to his people in these last days because we need to hear his voice. He wants to speak in these last days. And I don't want to miss what he's saying to me. I don't want to be so far away from the Lord that when the Lord speaks, I don't know what he's saying. I don't know what he's saying. I want to be close to the Lord to hear every whisper of the Lord in my life. Knowing what he's saying to me. He wants to be, have, he wants to be that close to us. But you've got to, as the song said this morning, you have to draw near to him. I'm just going to throw this out. What's the time you spend with the Lord in comparison with other enjoyment times? I believe the Lord wants us to enjoy us. He wants us to enjoy ourselves. Amen. I believe, I believe there's going to be baseball in heaven. <laughs> Even though I'm retired, I played softball till I was in my 60s. Ask anybody, I was a good pitcher. Amen. But I'm retired. <laughs> Period. <laughs> But I gotta be. I gotta share something. I got emotionally involved with baseball, which I shouldn't have. First of all, Chicago teams will always let you down. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I know. I've been let down 99 percent of the time. One year, 2005, I was in, in glory. Praise the Lord. But let me just share something about sports. There's nothing wrong with sports. But don't let sports have you. Nothing wrong with having things, but don't let things have you. Put them in proper perspective in your life. And I had a battle throughout my life, and some of you have the same battle, so don't look at me like you're holier than me. <laughs> There's certain things you have to put in priority. Prioritize your things. Seeking Him means He's top priority. My relationship with the Lord is top priority because everything else is going to be out of kilter. Everything else is going to be all messed up if I don't seek him first in my life because I want his will, I want his mind, I want his blessings upon all my life, upon my children, upon my home, upon everything in my life. And the only way to get that is to have, first, have him first in my life. Seek him every day. Seek him every day, spending time with him every day. That's seeking the Lord, spending that quality time with the Lord every day, not every other day. I need him every day. Seeking him every day, seeking him in the word. I've been getting things from the word. I've been saved for a long time, but I'm getting things from the word. I've never, it's like, it's, have, did I read this before? How many know what I'm saying? Did I read this before? And, and sometimes through crisis, the Lord showed me some things about animals this past week. It blew my mind. Blew my mind how precious animals are in God's sight. He loves animals for our enjoyment. And they'll be there in heaven. They'll be there in the kingdom too. Amen. He loves it. And, each, and the Lord showed me that his creation of different animals reflects his image. The lion, courageous and strength. The owl, wisdom. Dogs, unconditional love. There's different animals that reflect different. Creation reflects his image. His, all of crea creation reflects the creator. Amen. He even show me stuff like this in the word. Just to, just, and remas. You say, what is a rima? Rima is when God speaks to you. Oh, that's so precious. When you're reading the word and, and you hear the voice of God when you're reading the word. But you've got to seek him. Some of you have a superficial Christianity. It's a superficial Christianity. You don't just have you have toes in the water. Get in the deep. Walk in the water. It's fun. Amen. Seek him with all of your heart. Seek him for more than what you have right now. God has so much more than he ha that you have right now. He has so much more. 
He has so much more of his blessing, so much more of his gifts, so much more of him. There's so much more. And I think we're just kind of by the edge of the water. Come on into the deep for more. More. Seek him for more in your life. And here's the thing. When you seek him for more and then he satisfies you, then all of a sudden you get hungry for more. It's a cycle. You get hungry, you seek him, he fills that hunger, then your spiritual stomach, so to speak, gets bigger. Then because your spiritual stomach gets bigger, you've got to fill that spiritual stomach with more of him. The opposite. When I don't seek him, my spiritual stomach shrinks. where you have little desire. As you desire the Lord and he fills that desire, you desire him more. And there's nothing more in this life than being, being fulfilling you than what the Lord can fulfill you. He can give you his fulfillment, his peace, his joy, his life, that relationship with him, that intimacy with him. That's what he wants. The Lord seeks that. The Bible says the Lord is looking for worshipers that worship him in spirit and in truth. Those are worshipers, are seekers. He's, the Lord's seeking. The Bible says the Lord's looking around. There's not many who will seek him with all of their heart. He's looking for those kind of worshipers. He's looking, he's searching for worshipers that will worship him in spirit and in truth. Because that's when you come experience the presence of God. And let me say, there is a manifestation of the presence of God. Too much today in Christianity, and let me just say, too much today in Christianity is intellectual Christianity. Intellectual Christianity. You cannot meet God intellectually. God is spirit. And they who worship him, worship him in spirit and in truth. That's what's lacking in the Western church. We've relied upon our intellect. This is a spirit thing. I'm still, I feel like I'm just beginning this ministry now. I'm just learning this now. This is spirit stuff. You cannot approach God with your mind. You cannot approach God with your emotions. You approach him with your spirit, and spirit includes your heart, the, the core of you, coming with your heart to the Lord. Opening your heart up to him. Seeking him, wanting him more and more. And then he meets you and gives you more and more. <laughs> Seek him, and he's pleased with that. In all your ways acknowledge him. In all your ways acknowledge him. That means look to him for everything in your life. Everything. Stop. While you're going through your day, say, Lord Jesus, help me. We're going from, again, I, I'm, I'm down to the little small stuff. I wanted, we, Pat and I were going somewhere. I said, there, there looked like there was no parking. There's not going to be any park spaces at all. I just said, Lord Jesus, give us a park. Just give us a sparky space. Right there. Right there. Guy coming out. We came right in. See, he wants to get in the, he wants to show himself to you. He wants to show himself that he's real. That he's with you. That he's in you. That he's working in you. That, you, that the Lord is with you. The Lord is on your side. He wants to show himself real to you. And he is real. <laughs> That's why I believe that God is saving the best for the last. Because he's going to pour out his spirit. And uh, you need to see that. If you haven't seen that testimony of the United Nations. How this man was, uh, was dead ten times. They tried with the paddle. And, and, and God raised them up to life in the, in, the, in, the, in the emergency vehicle. And not only that. And then he went back to his doctor. That all the cells that showed that he had this heart disease. This gene. This genetic disease. All of that is gone. God gave him new cells. If I'm going to see miracles like that, that means I've got to seek him every day. I want to see the hand of God in my life. Amen. But you've got to seek him with all of your heart. Seek him for his will. Seek him for his character. Seek him for what he is. All that he has. All that you, his compassion, his love, his peace, his joy. God can give you his joy. Did you know God has joy? Amen. The joy of the Holy Spirit. It's better than any high you can get on. <laughs> Amen. Get addicted to his stuff. He's got good stuff. Amen. Seek him. Seek him with all of your heart. Be a seeker of the Lord. 
and he'll be pleased. And when God is pleased, he wants to bless us. You know the Lord wants to bless you? He wants to pour out his blessings on you. Seek him. That pleases him. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Seek him with all of your heart. So I don't know what that means. I don't know either, to be honest with you. But I'm, I'm endeavoring to be a seeker. I, th I know this means that you've got to want with everything he wants. I know that seeking means wanting. I, I know seeking means deliberate action. If I, if I were to tell you right now, I want everybody to look at me right If I were to say there is a diamond in this church that's worth one billion dollars. One billion. Did you hear what I said? One billion. And if you find it, you can have it. I don't think you go like this. I think you tear this place apart. <laughs> Am I right? Why? Because it's valuable. So you have to see how valuable the Lord is in your life. His presence is more valuable than anything else. Let's pray. May the Lord put a seeking heart in you. First thing to do is come to the Lord for salvation. The Bible says, Him that comes unto me, I will in no wise cast out. As you come to Jesus, he'll never cast you out. You say, Pastor, you don't know what I've done. You don't know what I've done. It doesn't matter because Jesus paid for it at the cross. He's a God of restoration. He's a God of restoring. If you're here this morning and you're not sure you're saved and, and Jesus loves you, he died and shed his blood, don't let that blood be wasted at all. Oh, he shed his blood for you, for you. He gave completely. He gave 100% for you. 100%. Would you say yes to Jesus? If you're here this morning and you're not sure you're saved, don't leave this auditorium unsaved to be cast away. And he will not, that, the Lord will break his heart for you not to be with him for all eternity because you said no to the Holy Spirit. Yes to the Holy Spirit. If you're here this morning and you want to say yes to Jesus, would you raise both hands so that I can see it? Yes to Jesus. For salvation first. For salvation. Yes to Jesus for my salvation. I want to know that I'm saved. I'm not sure I'm saved, but I want to know that I'm saved. Would you just lift your hand, one hand, two hands, just let me know that you want Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I, I believe that you, ra you raised your hand before. That's okay. Lord, give him assurance. Give him assurance in Jesus' name. Say this, my brother. Say this out loud. And say this with him. Dear Lord Jesus, I don't know that I'm saved. I lack assurance. I want to have that 100% assurance. I believe Jesus is the Son of God who died on the cross for all my sins and rose again. I believe that. Lord Jesus, once and for all, I take you now as my Savior and Lord forever and ever. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. If you're a Christian today and you want to seek the Lord, you haven't been seeking him, it's never too late to seek the Lord. Amen? It's never too late to say, I want my life as one big seeking the Lord for everything, with all my heart for everything. doesn't mean you're perfect. When you mess up, you seek the Lord for forgiveness you seek the Lord for how to get overcome that the next time you're tempted so it doesn't mean a per perfect life it means a life that's your hearts toward the Lord the Lord wants your heart the Lord wants your heart he wants all of your heart say yes to him today put a smile on his face today by seeking him let's stand 
you respond to the Holy Spirit. If that's your heart today and you want to be a seeker for the rest of your life, a seeker of the Lord, you come. Say, Lord, teach me to be a seeker. I don't even know how to be a seeker. Teach me to be a seeker. I want to know. Put it inside of me, a seeking heart. I don't have a seeking heart. You can't produce it. The Lord can produce it, though. You come. Say, Lord, put that seeking heart inside of me today. Jesus. You know, the Lord can make us seekers. He can give us grace to seek Him. Amen? He can give us grace to seek Him. And then there's some things, if you are a seeker, there's some things that you have to really seek. I don't know why, but there's some things you have to really, really seek before you see something. Some things are piece of cake, but other things in the kingdom are take require, require persistence and endurance. I don't know. The only Lord knows why he allows some things that he wants you to really seek him with all of your heart. Really seek him with all of your heart. Everything's not going to give and be given to you on a silver platter. Amen. Sometimes there's demonic forces that are blocking it, that we have to seek and press through. But start with, Lord, give me a seeking heart. Lord, give me a seeking heart. I want a seeking heart. I don't know how to seek you, Lord. Be honest with God. The Lord loves honesty. He loves honesty. Come clean with the Lord. I mean, be honest with the Lord. Say, Lord, I don't have a seeking heart, but I want a seeking heart. Amen? We're going to sing it one more time. You can respond to the Holy Spirit. One way to get a seeking heart is to respond to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't let your heart get hardened. Don't let your heart get hardened. One thing about a seeking heart, it's a soft heart. Amen. One more time. Respond to the Holy Spirit. Thank you for watching the presentation from the New Life Christian Fellowship. We are located at 6235 West North Avenue, Oak Park, Illinois. For more information, call us at 708-848-2441. Thank you. May the Lord Jesus Christ truly bless you.